Hi there. Hello, Glenn. Hey, Glenn. Hi. Is that Dana? That's me. (laughs) Are we the three? Yeah. (laughs) Unless someone else... I'm monitoring it to see if anyone else comes on, but... Yeah. Yeah. So, what's new? Hmm. Um... For me, I've been researching stuff in Baltimore and how it was founded and what they were trying to set up there. Because, you know, I've seen that thing you were talking about, like Port of Entry. That's what they say Baltimore is. And, like, they get all types of things that shipped in there. And um, it's a perfect place to, you know, ship whatever you want, from prostitutes to drugs. And, um... I don't know. The, supposedly, the guy who founded it, uh, he was uh, he was given a charter, I think, by James the first, mm-hmm. and he went and he opened it for. Uh, he, he said that uh, it was for like religious toleration, um, and it was and he set up like a whole like Jesuit thing over there, so they have Loyola College. There's a whole bunch of other stuff I've yet to look into. There's like Peabody Institute, they call it. There's um, what else? There's um, uh, Enoch Pratt Free Circulating Library, Druid Hill, and the and the bird. There's a uh, for the state. There's um, they call it the Firebird, and I was watching uh, a ballet by uh, Igor Stravinsky. Um, it's like a really successful ballet and it's like the whole thing was like a coded message and I'm trying to find out why they uh, had why they would use the firebird for that place what was it saying about that area so, the Oriole I'm, I'm just yeah. exploring I don't, I don't know yet Oreo. Yeah, the Oreo. Exactly. um, Like a um, feeding station Mm -hmm. on a breast. Well, the the or that Oreo or Firebird, they call it. Um, it's used a lot in a lot of mythology, and one in particular was Slavic. Usually means it signifies. They say the feather usually uh, a, a tough journey. It's gonna be a long journey. But when the guy founded the the state Baltimore, um, he they on the site it says that he left later on. He wasn't successful because supposedly because of harsh winters. But I think it's something else to it. I think he was there to set something up. The out. capital of what state? Uh, uh, Baltimore? Maryland, they call it. Maryland. Maryland. Yeah. That could give you a hint. Yeah, it did. <laughs> the arm of why. Land is DNA. Yep. Mary is virgin birth. Yeah, that's what they were setting up there, and they have the Jesuits were. What's their role? Because from what I see, like, they seem... They seem to be like subterfuge type of people back. Oh, they're the teachers. Oh, okay. And and education is uh, is part of social engineering. Yeah. And it, all you got to do is look at your site and see how many hits come in from educational institutes under corporate. Of entry, which means it's not a student. Somebody in administration. They're the ones who would know. Well, I would suggest that teachers programmed at a school they call normal. Mm. Normal, remove the L, and what you have left is Roma. Baltimore has Emore, and therefore that 
Roma as well. It has, yeah, it's, uh, I was looking at that word too, ball, it, more. So on one side you have ball, the love of money. So I thought it was for profit too they went there. And in the middle of everything between Roma and ball, they all meet together it. So that's what they both agree on. Both, um, you can be yeah. sure that it plays a significant role. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm kind of, I'm just, and I'm looking at the, you know, the Calvert family, they call them. These are the guys, Lord Baltimore, they call them. He came from the Calvert family. Calvert and his name is Green. Yeah. Future. Yeah, and, and, and Cal is Callus, is French for Callus. Or, and any time you have cat, you're close to excrement. Yeah. <laughs> And I was like, okay, that, that's the other hint that that place is yeah. used for that. And and that vert, that color green, it's linked to um, Libya. And that's the flag of Libya. Yeah, the green book. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and it's... He, he is playing a much more important role than what the media is telling. Yeah. And they're... There is a major significance to the activity that's going on there now, and you know you won't get the answers out of the media. <laughs> you know Libya, when I was that word Libya, um, somebody suggested to me it could also mean alibi, and I seen the word in uh, Greek mythology. It's, um, it's a person in Greek. Uh, maybe I might be a hint. Let me see that. Well, they use the body as a significant uh, benchmark uh, as to where they're going. My suggestion is Libya is labia. Oh, yeah. Labia means proof. And that's what they're doing. Mm. They've based their whole system upon screwing countries. As I've told you before, the word country is yeah. not country for nothing. <laughs> Cunt is king. <laughs> but, yeah. It is the transfer of the letter O from the word Troy at the back to the front that confuses it. But what they're talking about is Helen of Troy. Yeah. The most beautiful woman in the world, the Scriber as yeah. Then they go to they went to war because uh, I think one of the guys was like a judge, but to see who was the most beautiful, and because one of them picked Helen, they uh, th that's what started the Trojan War. It was between uh, Aphrodite, Hera, and somebody else. I think it was Helen, sure. And the guy, the judge, chose Helen, and because of that, they went to war. Trojan horses are symbolic of something within. Yeah. Uh, very much like the Fabergé eggs. An yeah. egg within an egg, within an egg, within an egg. Well, it's the same thing with Trojan horses. Is you see the ruse on the outside is the horse. On the inside is an entire military in that story of Troy. <laughs> yeah. So it all comes back down to what will be the perfect slave and what elements need to be included in that perfect slave. How do you know that what you know is correct? The, uh, that's what I've been working on with Jenny um, to to basically identify why she chose the name Arizona Wilder. There is no significant reason 
to suggest she would have chosen that name. Hmm. Did you used to see those commercials with the, the burnt toast commercials? No. The Wilder. Pinfield, they used to have a commercial celebrating him in Canada. I saw one. And the, the greatest Canadian alive or whatever. And and they kept saying, uh, I smell burnt toast because he was playing with everyone's brains and stuff and triggering the... Yeah. The, the, the interesting thing about the research being done on him so far is that um, the most important discoveries that he made are linked to uh, a patient being um, um, operated on the top of the skull removed and then, because there's no pain within the brain itself, they could bring the person back to just local anesthetics, but nothing right. with the brain. And yeah. in doing the test that they did, the significant discovery was uh, that memory resides in the brain in the same way as a story resides on a film. It's uh, in sequence of events, and mm -hmm. uh, when you tap into the brain, it's like starting a videotape any place at random in the middle, and the story goes from there. Right. Uh, what they discovered, what he discovered, Wilder Penfield, and he couldn't, wasn't allowed to do this kind of stuff in the U.S. And Rockefellers funded uh, a lot of his activities and the people that followed him. What they discovered is not only was there a memory, but there was, in fact, attached to the memory a complete reliving of the events. And therefore, in one story that they recount is that the patient said, who turned the uh, stereo on or hi-fi on yeah, yeah. in the operating room? Yep, I remember and I've seen that. Everybody looked at him, and he was tapping to the beat. Yeah. He's, it's exactly the music that was playing at the time I'm now reliving when you touch certain portions of my brain. Now, when you tap in that brain, you tap those. Those are just memories from the person's current life. You can't go back into any other um, memories from, like, say, another life. Oh, not from, from other lives, uh, as far as they'll admit. The thing that is um, attached to this whole business, however, is they then got an oscilloscope, and they attached the oscilloscope to the brain so that when a brain wave occurred, there would be a spike on the oscilloscope. And so the, the person had to make up what he was going to do um, at random. And, for example, if, if he thought that he would raise his hand, there would be a spike with the thought, and there would then follow a spike with the uh, raising of the hand. And that was easy enough to understand. You think about something, and then you do it. Mm -hmm. But the strange thing that happened on the oscilloscope is before he had the thought, there was a spike. 
that reappeared before all thoughts of action. So in fact, there were no pairs of spikes, the thought and the action. There was a third spike at the beginning, out in front, which suggests a command. Mm -hmm. And that eliminates, in the terms they use, the possibility of free speech, freedom <laughs> of action. And yeah. you are getting a message, then you think, then you act. Wow. Yeah. So, that's a, they can, uh... so all of that became very important to the research. Now... The problem they had was, is it true? Is this person really telling us what happened on the day he's telling us it happened? And there is no real way for somebody like the doctor standing there and the patient on the table. They don't know each other intimately. In intimately uh, to that level where the doctor would know for certain these things happen. So there was an obvious missing point here. What they needed was to have benchmarks. Benchmarks based on things that don't change precession, astronomy, that kind of stuff. That would, in fact, give them a date for something that then is reported as having happened. And until they would have those benchmarks, they can't trust the information they're getting because they got no science base it on. So it, it's interesting that Dr. Penfield quote unquote retired, resigned <coughs> in 1954, went back out west, Canada and the U.S., and Jenny was born in 55. Now, think of this possibility here. You make a child in a laboratory. That's not difficult for anyone to grasp these days. Mm -hmm. Cloning of a pig, cloning of a sheep is only modeled upon the ultimate cloning is that of an individual uh, and a person in the old days clan mothers hermaphrodite used to clone themselves so the, the making of a clone is not difficult to imagine the making of a clone in a lab is basically by taking the genome assembling it putting it into an egg and having that egg either carried uh, to term by a female through artificial uh, induction, introduction into the body and, and uh, uh, letting it proceed after it's been fertilized in, in the same manner as a child is born today that we think a child is born today by normal means. The other way is to do it completely in the lab and have an artificial incubator do the work of carrying the baby to term. In any event, if you can manufacture a baby and you have control of that baby from birth, you can, in fact, implant benchmarks based on a calendar of events, i.e., uh, teachers would be the 
the best model because they're the more brainwashed of all the people. They get brainwashed at normal school. Uh, teachers would be given a baby in whatever way you want, but an artificially put together child, not not child of the couple, although the father might be involved disseminating, uh, but not necessarily. And you you put that child in with a family who agree to conditions that they would be receiving an amount of money in a trust fund that would, in fact, uh, be theirs to have at retirement or uh, as a legacy to their children after they pass away. If they agree to, before they have their own children, take in this child and proceed then based upon a calendar very clearly marked to do certain things to the child. Sexual abuse would be a benchmark that would be obvious and and I would suggest to you that uh, circumcision having seen it done to two of my three sons uh, I can imagine that it's not a pleasant experience for a child and would benchmark itself so you on the calendar it's written certain day, full moon, circumcision, another day, uh, fondling, another time, other things to happen to the child until uh, the child is big enough, old enough to be penetrated artificially at first and then by the father money would be coming in on each one of those events into a trust fund that would not be visible basically to the <coughs> and then that process could continue. Through the teen years, by strangers to the the person themselves, but sent out to molest or rape or torture. It could in fact even go to the husband person decides they got to get away from this family and get married, the husband could be in on it. The husband's uh, family could be in on it. The attachment of the husband to his own family and the need to live next door might be a good hint that something is going on, that type of stuff. Mm. And and as uh, an adult, uh, impregnation without the husband leading to pregnancy that is questioned by the family. Where did this child come from? Told by women who have abortions that that's traumatic in itself. All these events done on certain dates and recorded would, in the end, allow that person 
to go through the same exercise as the patient of Dr. Penfield. And they could then test against a known situation. And I believe that's what's been done. And the problem they have it's been done to more than one. One of them, me. Another one is Jenny. I could not be uh, tortured in the same way as a woman. I would be tortured more by having my plans disrupted. I was working on a project and got it real close and everything done, and then all of a sudden it's taken away. I can tell you about ten such occasions in my life including having the court hearing, having all the senators and cabinet ministers charged with corruption and everything, and then having the Premier of Ontario step in and uh, uh, the Ontario Provincial Police say three years later that there is no reason for continuing cases. Building a project of $160 million, having the land, the shovels on the ground, having built a school to replace the school that used to be on that site, all of those things in place, having uh, 84% of the space leased uh, uh, in, in uh, the form of uh, letters of intent, that kind of stuff, all is part of a programming session that I can dis- I can uh, talk about in detail from my birth. The problem that they have is that at the end, how you do the medical examination is you have the patient conserved or conservator the person with the legal right to say sister's gone nuts my husband has gone crazy I will be the conservator if you, you the state put them in an asylum. Once in an asylum, the asylum can demand uh, that the person medically fixed by frontal lobotomy. All of that would give excuses for putting the patient on a table operating on the pretext you're operating based upon the problem with the person and in fact be operating for the purpose of retrieving your benchmarks matching them to the memory of the person table and then you have scientific proof the functionality of your memory retrieval system. Now this becomes very important to the military because of two things. They have a need to implant memories into some person who will deliver a message 
but not remember afterwards. They don't want the other military to retrieve that information. So they they can put it into an alter state within the person. That person delivers the message, but yet will never remember it because it's an alter state that was created to carry that message, and it can't be retrieved. The second need the military has is if the problem is theirs, if someone sent a spy into their area, they catch the spy, and they want to know what the mission was. So it's the reverse one of the other. But the most likely group who would need this knowledge would be the spies. Canada, it ceases. And uh, police, RCMP, U.S., FBI, CIA, but much more important in the background is the Navy is the oldest spy. There was a time the only way you could go and spy on somebody in a foreign land is to put them on a boat and send them to China or India or whatever, bring back information. So the Navy has always been linked to spy Phoenicians, Old Navy. So, and the ultimate spies would be the Marines. Get off the boat and go in someplace and retrieve some information or deliver some information. Other spies would be ecclesiastics, priests, nuns, for the purpose of socially engineering the second level of taxation because that's that's what they are they are second level of taxation they do it claiming that it's volunteer so does the IRS claim it's volunteer but when you don't pay they put you in jail so the benchmark uh, scenario seems to be the most logical to explain Jenny's and my life and explain why they chose us because of our links to prior to the Ice Age. I think then Roma, Romagnon, both of us manufactured both of us uh, abused but in different ways and both of us with signs that our parents were paid I think you just described my my father Clay. I think that's your father's secret <laughs> and why when he gets or those people who did things like that get to be a certain age are given an induced version of Alzheimer's. Yeah, because that's what happened. He he definitely has links on his side to military, yeah. and he you know that that makes sense that you know I, now I guess it would be up to my mother to say, hey, we should just put. Mother him in. would know, but she may not know at all. Do you have any sisters? No, he's got brothers. Yeah. And are you the oldest? Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a uh, a possibility, if not only a probability, that you're a product of some activity done because you know you can't have a test that's valid by doing it just once or twice. It's got to be hundreds if not thousands of people 
who have had to suffer through the same kind of thing. It may be that the very fact that we become seekers link to that, that that we are in fact searching for what's behind all of this. How come it seems to be so orchestrated? And all of that comes from uh, the fact that Jenny couldn't remember why she chose Arizona Wilder, but the system would need to know mm-hmm. who that person is. Chances are that in their original name they would have a link to the word or the name angel. Of course, she's Nagel, and that's an angel with the letters scramble. And I'm Glenn, and that's angel with the A missing. Top spy in the East was called. Galen, 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 what was his name, Galen? Galen. Reinhardt, who founded... Reinhardt Galen, yeah. Reinhardt Galen, founded the CIA along with the Dulles Brothers. Yeah, that Project Paperclip? Yeah. Yeah. Left left, uh, Germany... uh, basically not having to go through the Nuremberg trials, dressed as a Nazi general, got off the plane dressed as a four-star American. So, like, yeah, like, with my father, I think, like I said, I think it would be like up to my mom and be like, oh, let's put him in a asylum so he can just retrieve that information. Yeah. Uh, so if I, I don't see her, actually, you never know. I don't know. I, I, I don't see her doing that. On the 19th birthday, Jenny's 19th birthday, while her doctor was away, her mother had her taken to the hospital and tested. She had been given something to make her sick in order to give the pretext for going to the hospital. The 19th birthday in California has some legal ramifications. Uh, Passing away from the responsibility of the parents. So, obviously, the mother was looking for something from the doctors who would do the examination without wanting the responsibility of uh, her being in whatever shape she was in. And obviously had been abused by her father as a child, and the mother wanted to know because she is, like everybody in the system, on a need-to-know basis. So she knows her role in what they accepted to do, but wouldn't know the whole story. The father, on the other hand, who had been linked to military, by the way, they didn't ask him to serve uh, when he went to boot camp. They they let him go back home uh, on the pretext that he had something more important to deal with, I guess. But it's all linked to uh, other events that have happened at the Royal Montreal 
Psychiatric Institute. Dr. Penfield and the people who came during his time and others afterwards. Years as if a large um, American version of Penfield's work is and was being done in Arizona. That would explain using the name Arizona and Wilder, of course, to link to Penfield. Don't forget that if you take the L out of field, you have fiend. Mm. So in Arizona, too, that's where that shooting happened, so maybe they were doing yeah. It's uh, interesting that the shooter and the shooted, shooted yeah. um, were in the same church. Yeah, they were all they were yeah. all like linked. It was all like they were the people who were shot. You look at their names; they all seem to some type of benchmark. It signified yeah. to me the yeah, one girl. Braided. What happened? The whole thing was orchestrated. Yeah. Yep. There's also a phoenix in Arizona, too. Yeah. They're, they're popular for iced tea. Whatever that may mean. I bet that means something. Um, yeah. But, yeah, the one, the one girl he shot was... Um, uh, she was. I think her birthday was nine eleven. I don't know what that. Wasn't yeah. there a senator who is a Manchurian candidate from Arizona? Uh, I don't know. He ran for the leadership of the Republicans. He's got a kind of a wilted hand. I don't know. I'm not sure. Was it Violet? Uh, oh yeah. yeah. What was his name in the last election? Oh, I don't know. Do you remember all these things? Do you remember like politicians the way I do, George? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet, man. Because <laughs> politics well, is we're important. We're supposed to have an election on the second of May, but that's completely. Uh, in the hands of creation, I think. Mm -hmm. There might be water in the way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that reminds me, I was looking at the uh, <coughs> the state, Maine. Yeah. It just reminds me of water, Maine. And I think there's a water town in there. Yeah. Right by, uh, I don't know. It's, a, it's probably one of the most unpopular states in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, but I'm still looking into it. But their summer home there. Yeah, I know it's down south in like southern states. Um, their social engineering is a little different from the ones like New York. They're very religious. That's a big part of it, and military is involved in a lot of those states. A lot of, a lot of that border area of the 49th mm -hmm. from Chicago to uh, Washington there's a lot of death institutions mm -hmm. main scientists going back to the crusades mm -hmm. are the people from the Vatican how mm how -hmm. So yeah, like I've, you know, I've been. I, I, I'm probably not in in depth research as you into these institution, but from what I do find, like, hang on, uh, I'll be back in about two minutes. Yeah. So what'd you find in Maine? You said Water Maine in the Water Town. I think it's called Waterville. I'll tell you. <coughs> There's a there's a Waterville and a Bath. Bath is right on the coast. Um, 
It was founded by, um, uh, let's see, Ferdinando Gordes, G-O-R-G-E-S, and uh, Captain John Mason of the English Royal Navy. (laughs) Mm. It's interesting when you look at those names, like people in history, like uh, the one Conqueror guy, uh, Cortez. Yeah. I I seen that he they gave him like basically the power to do all these things and yep. when you look at his name it's it's set it means set rock or another word for set rock is cornerstone or foundation. And that's what he was doing when he kinda did that when he just took over. He was setting a foundation. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, when I was looking at stuff on the Mormons, I was watching the video. I'm back. Oh, you're back? Yeah. I always wondered why, mm-hmm. if I was causing them such a problem, they didn't just kill me and get it over with. Benchmark seems to be a good answer. Ah, uh, yeah. They it's a good way to look at it. Trouble, but they don't want to kill you. Maybe they want to learn from how a person like you would deal with that particular situation. You know? Yeah. So that's probably like, oh, you think there's a field of um, scientists who understand this, how to retrieve this and how to recognize it? He's benchmarked. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Hey, does, don't they? They use all the, the trauma base to to hide whatever they're you know programming them with inside that trauma, so that they won't look at it. They won't. Re, they don't want to revisit that painful memory. So that's usually where they hide that. And they they found that when people uh, had epileptic seizures, mm. it was linked to scarring on the brain. And the end product is depression. So when they're looking at people with depression, they know that there are some recessed memories in there someplace. What they, the attempt to do by things like Amatol is to shut down the rest of the brain and only leave the part that's important to memories functioning removes all of the the super ego activity that tries to hide the truth mm. and they can get to, to the truth but there's still no way to prove that those are all real memories and not something that was fabricated so they needed the test to benchmark as they did the traumatic activity as they caused the depression to benchmark it in a manner in which they would know for certain if the person under the operation recited the activity as it had occurred and had been registered at the time so to do that you have to have implants. Like depression, is it like almost always linked to this? Yeah. Uh. Here's oh. here's something for you guys to think about. According to the cell, when Jenny got to the border and attempted to cross the border. She was approached by two women and two men. But the woman was at the counter, and the other woman was the chief investigator, and they did most of the work. 
after it happened, I called uh, the border and spoke to the police superintendent months, months after the event. I said, are you certain that you don't have a videotape? They said, no, we only have a videotape of things that happen inside the building, but none other than those fixed videotapes. I said, are you sure of that? I said, positive. I said, what would you say if I told you I'm being told by my investigators there are two audio tapes, maybe one videotape, but they don't know quite for certain if it came out yet because it has to be processed. They said we'd have no way of knowing anything about that, we don't record anything like that. I kept probing, told, yes, the, the two audio tapes are there. They come from two separate individuals. What do you mean they come from individuals? Well, two people who had the ability to record what was being said when they were alone with another person. And these people know about it? Not necessarily. What do you mean? Well, an implant bio implant would allow people to record and have that data retrieved by remote control without their knowledge. Oh. What about <laughs> video? Well, we'll know when the video is developed. If it first of all comes out, and secondly, what is the focus? And it appears as if a video was successfully made that day, and the person on the screen being videotaped is Jenny. But the person videotaping seems to be coming from the face of the person talking to her. <laughs> and she's not aware of it. And she's not aware of it. Not necessarily aware of it. Hmm. Huh. Now, deal with them apples. <laughs> Think of an expanded version of it in anybody's life. Yeah. Well, uh, here I am. I'm, think, well, I'm thinking about, like, you know, they would have that technology for the new slave. They, they've been using it on us. I would suspect they probably had it before the Ice Age. With the technology being what it is. Yeah. It was only a matter of before it was implanted in Roma or cro But in any event, isn't there a gland called the pituitary gland that can see images without light? 
Isn't that what they call the third eye? Yeah. Uh, well. <laughs> Isn't it possible that a signal coming in through the eyes makes its way to the pituitary gland, converts into images there that can be retrieved by remote control? Or that could make people see things that they're not necessarily seeing, you know, that, that aren't really there? <laughs> Sounds that are not there but are being heard, and people are told they're crazy because they keep hearing sound. Isn't it Wilder Penfield's story, known only to a few, that DNA has a telephone number? Sure. Each person has a different DNA and therefore a different telephone number. And that a call can be made to that telephone number. The data retrieved from that telephone number and converted to images on a screen. Sure. Well, <laughs> the same way as you have fingerprints, DNA has a phone number. Mind you, it may not have been created as a phone number. It may just have been a description of what that batch of DNA would do. But anybody who has a number, like a barcode, can use it. Seek this number. Once you get it, download the information. Reconvert it as you do on a telephone, you know, the sound going in, speaking the language of the person speaking with all the intonation. The other end, after going through a maze of electronics, deciphering and ciphering, it comes out as a copy of the original. that same thing is possible with DNA. That's what Wilder Penfield was saying. He resigned the year before Jenny was born. Spent his time in her area. Her parents moved back and forth between Montana and California and Arizona back to Montana and over to Oregon, all for no apparent reason, even buying a house as if they were going to spend the rest of their lifetime in one place. Only a year later, pack up their bags and move back to someplace else. Somebody had to be saying, okay, we need you here, we need you there. Don't worry about the expense. We'll buy the house, you know, that kind of stuff. Prospects doing that. Yeah. Who has more of an interest? in having super slaves. Isn't what group it, would have more of an yeah, interest? Yeah, what group? Well, well it could... Raw men? Could be... Men with breasts? <laughs> Does that mean the actual man has to have breasts? No, it doesn't. A man groups. hiding inside a woman has breath. It could be, yeah, like it could be different groups. Like the military would really benefit because you were saying they can have the 
triune man. They can just be the perfect assassin. That's perfect for the military. The, You're right. Like, work, the word for Brazil yeah. is, in fact, spoken in Brazil as Brasil. Uh -huh. S can be a T. That makes the last four letters I, E, A, and L. Yeah, Brazil, by the way, I've I, I seen milk, that Obama. Milk, the land of milk and honey. Le, <laughs> L-A-I-T. Yeah, and a bra is just yeah. for support. <laughs> and a bra is for support. So. Talking about breast milk. Would Obama sold the oil. Obama sold the oil rights to Brazil, and and somebody was telling me that like, because they say that China holds the debt is like the number one country that holds sure. the debt for the U.S., but Brazil is like number two. And, and there's another, and there's a country, there's a providence or an area in Brazil called Bahi. You pronounce mm -hmm. it Bahi, but it's spelled with the same letters as Bahai, as the religion of the United Nations. Ask Brian the next time you speak to him, and he'll tell you everything's flown from India to Brazil. <laughs> yeah, he must have like a and ready for the last thousand years. Yeah. The land of milk and honey. Mm. Well, they... Honey comes from bees. Number for a male was eight shaped with squares rather than circles. The, the people... The people that survive in Brazil, in that area, South America, what what do you think the system's going to do with them? Like the people that are just living there. Same thing has happened to the people that are living here. It will happen in the southern hemisphere one thousand years later. Uh, okay. There uh, is no need. For an imperfect slave, perfect slave is available. All you got to do is instead of making Roma, this time you make perfect Trojan horse. A woman is not a woman. A woman controls internally, our male infrastructure, computer activity, all the elements crave day. I suggest there is one woman catch on probably carrying a camera at least the ability to communicate what enters her eyes and goes to the pituitary gland can be retrieved elsewhere All of this material, I'm told, is being gathered for the trials of that each one of those persons will be confronted with the ultimate result. That 
the cleansing of the planet and the replacement of a third generation. Even the ones that were like, like the one, like that one lady who, who has a camera in her head, doesn't even know about it. Like, her name is Knox. Knox. It's like these people, like it's like they're more. They seem to be more victims than perpetrators. Everybody is a victim. There are no good people. There are no bad people. There are simply robots programmed by a computer who chooses to make them good or bad. Yeah. and monitors their activity on a moment-to-moment -moment basis. That's why the Bible says God is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect spy system. <laughs> no. I try to get that point across to people, like, what it means, but, you know, I guess they can never get past the fantasy stuff. Yet, if they watch science fiction, it's more likely the story of the truth that's happening today. Yeah. That's what I did. I've watched so much science fiction, and every time I've watched a new one, it's something new, something new, another perspective or a new, a new fact or evidence. Think of it this way. If you cannot speak words, how do you communicate? You communicate with pictures. Mm -hmm. So if creation gave you a system of memory called DNA, put that old DNA in your spine so you could retrieve it as intuition whenever you needed it, the information coming to you as intuition would appear in your head as a picture. Yeah. If, on the other hand, an asshole called creator who mm -hmm. wants you not to get the truth from the pictures in the DNA in your spine, he would cause the recombination of your DNA in such a manner there would be a medulla placed in your neck to block the activity of pictures coming from spine into your brain. Ultimately, you would want to replace those pictures with pictures they fabricated themselves. Thus, Hollywood. Thus, TV. Yeah. Yeah. And every time you go to the movie, you're going to be programmed. Because what it does is it puts a set of pictures in your brain rather than in your spine. Mm -hmm. And your spine is being blocked when you're trying to think of answers. You automatically go to the answers that you saw in the movies you saw in the past without realizing mm -hmm. those are just movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, movies are just fantasy, all of it. It's just a fa uh, it, Depending a, on the, the person you are... It's not a fantasy because a lot of times they tell you, ha, 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 we're doing this to you. Yeah. It out. But it depends on the person who's looking at it who can tell that it's a ha, ha, ha joke. Some it's just, it all depends on the, on the individual and what they went through and. But those not, are the images they have to choose from, and not the real images that are there from their historical background. Mm. Prior to this particular life, it's quite possible that that DNA gathered evidence from other lives that would be useful in this life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For the medulla, we don't remember it. 
Yeah. Unless, of course, we have 100 cats and long hair. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah, I have a theory about um, the Neanderthals, but I have a feeling. I don't know if it's, I don't know how true it is, but just I think the Neanderthal is like they they since they downloaded their genius part in this computer, <laughs> like all their higher functions is just inside a computer, and like you really don't um, these the people that are left over are not. Um, not all there. They can't really um, probably function as like you or me or something because all because well, everything's in the. you're getting a signal before you ask, who's sending the signal? Get a signal. Get oh, it. the system. Yeah. That's interesting because as a musician, that's pretty much what you rely on to sound good is <laughs> not thinking about what you're playing you know and it just it just you just it's just kind of like when like speaking you're not necessarily thinking about what you're going to say it just comes out it's kind of that same method you know there's been times where I'll, I'll be I'll be playing things that I could never imagine and then as soon as I start thinking about that I'm playing it I can't do it anymore like it just stops like I'll lose control of it. But. I find, like, it helps when you... It uh, explains it in a manner that suggests somebody's communicating it to you. Right. Yeah, that's what, <laughs> yeah it makes, us, makes sense. It can and definitely make sense. How could you ever differentiate if it's coming from creation? Creation, creation promised freedom. Uh. Creation can't do that. What is an idiot savant but a receiver of complex, complicated data? What day of the week was the 4th of February, year 5,364 B.C.? And they'll tell you in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That, that doesn't exist in the human brain, mm -hmm. but it certainly can exist in a computer. Yeah, but see the, that. Yeah. Well, so what do you? How do you? How do you explain guys like the Rain Man? Like, are they like a cross between the Neanderthal and? Why do the priests of Freemasonry say so remote it be? So remote it be. Oh, so they can just tr put that information in the human being, and it looks like he's a genius. Oh, that's also wh that's why you know about him. That's why he's famous. Like yeah. that's their boy kind of thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's not your, you know. So there you have it. I gotta go finish my work. <laughs> right. So food for thought, and let it be breast milk. <laughs> <laughs>